Hello everyone. Bunjani bonki. Ye bonfu puma pina uma chega uzani na usi nemba. Just joking. Just having a bit of fun. Ubinga lela bonki no kamarache so. Amen. It's a great privilege for me today to introduce my friend Pastor Peggy Masikani to you. Peggy has come a long, long way since he joined us many years ago when he did Year of Your Life with us at Open Skies Church in Kloof. He is now the pastor with his wife, Z. They pastor Open Skies Giba Church. So, la le le gaasle, vulint le be, la le le gaasle, and enjoy what my friend Peggy has to say to you today. And you all said, Amen. Good morning, Open Skies Giver Church and uh, all our friends watching us online. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be bringing the word of God today. And thank you for really allowing me to be part of your, of your family life this morning. Uh, I'm excited to just share what I believe God is laid in my heart. So before I preach, I would like to pray quickly. Father, thank you for your word that is living and active, sharper than two double-edged sword. Father, speak to all of us, every person watching us online, every, just everyone uh, who's, um, who can hear us speak today, I pray that you'll speak to all of us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Right. Um, uh, I'm going to be speaking in English and in Zulu so that, um, uh, so that everyone is kind of catered for, you know what I mean? So it's awesome. So really the title of my message this morning is um, The Time Is Now. Uh, actually, I struggle to, to come up with the title for my preach because what I'm going to be talking about today is something that's really close to my heart. Uh, it's not going to be a long sermon at all today. So I'm encouraging you to sit down, uh, have a cup of coffee, and uh, or get your cereals or your porridge, your parish. ready because I really believe that God is going to speak to you today. Um, uh, he's, led some, he's led a message in my heart that I need to share with you. So Open Skies Giver family, I really hope that you are doing great, that you are holding on to God. We do love you and we miss you. And we're going to be back in this building very soon. It's an empty building right now. Uh, only my, my camera crew <laughs> that's, <laughs> that is with me today. But it's an empty building. But I'm excited that many, many people are going to be able to hear the word of God today. I'm excited to, to bring the word. All right. So as I said to you earlier, the title of my message today, the time is now let's read the word of god psalm chapter 23 psalm 23 verse number four it says this even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil i'm, gonna, I'm just gonna stop there even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil look look church we are living in a, in a, in a dark world we're living in dark times so many wrong things are happening you know, this, this racial tension, you know, is, 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 is not from God. It's not right. We believe that God will turn all things to good because he always does that. He turns everything to good for those that love him and, and are called according to his purpose. But it, it's this racial tension is happening at a moment and this uh, gender-based violence is happening. I'm going to be talking uh, about that. I'm going to speak to that in a moment. But there's a lot of wrong things that are happening um, uh, as, as I'm speaking to you right now. But I believe that the time is now. And, and I, read, I read Psalm chapter 24, 23 verse 4. And it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Look, South Africa, I need to speak to you. Everybody listening um, or watching this online right now. I need to tell you that we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We're not going to sit in this thing. We're not going to sit and uh, uh, in this dark uh, moment and leave there. We're not going to camp there. We are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. There's going to be, uh, uh, we're going to cross over to the other side and it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. But I want to, I want to preach. I don't know. Please allow me to preach now. Um, as, I, as I've mentioned to you that there's so many, so many ungodly things that are happening. And I want to just take a moment and address 
this racial tension that's happening at the moment. But before I do that, I want to read this, this verse to you. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16. And it says this. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine. I like this. Let your light shine before all men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I like this. I like that the Bible is so specific that we, it's time we let our light shine before all men, that they may see the good works in our lives, but glorify the Father in heaven. So uh, let me speak to this gender-based violence for a moment. You know, um, I, was, uh, I was at my mom's house yesterday, and uh, just uh, talking to my mom, and she was telling me that in Inanda, uh, there's this house where a man came and knocked on the door, and um, there was just a mom and a daughter in the house, uh, so this man came and knocked on the door and the mom just casually like every parent would do say hey so and so just get up and get up and open for someone is knocking at the, at the door and this lady got up um, she's about 24 years old um, and as she opened the door this man shot you know so this young girl was shot and died that is wrong that is not from god and um, there is a lady, uh, another story, there is a lady um, from Gwandenge, she's, she's about 26 years old. She was stabbed and, and, and thrown, not, away from, not far away from this place, and uh, just thrown on the, on, on, the, on the bushes there. And she was found dead. It's wrong, it's ungodly, it's demonic, it's not from God. I want to just tell, speak to all the men that are watching me right now. Men, we've lost our place. We've lost our place. Our place of protection, protecting our women, protecting our kids. We've lost our position of, of being providers and, and, and bring security to people that are, are, are looking up to us. We've, we've, we've gone down. We've gone down and we've gone to a position that God has not called us to do and uh, to be in a place. Let me tell you, man, it's time we repent and we go back to God and we ask God to forgive our sins because killing women that cannot defend themselves and abusing kids and raping them is not from God. It's from the pit of hell and we need to take responsibility as men and repent. I'm speaking on behalf of all the black people, all the black men out there. Stop. Let's stop abusing our women. Stop killing kids. They defenseless. They they cannot do anything to us. We are insecure. We do not know God. That's why we do this. Because the fruits of, of, of coming to a place where you can kill a baby and rape a woman and kill them, it, 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 it shows that we, we've moved away from the grace of God. But I'm here to tell, to tell all the men, all the men, black and white, everybody watching this, Gender-based violence must stop and start with us. As a pastor in a township, I want to tell everybody who knows me and, 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 and obviously know what I do, that I stand against gender-based violence. It is not from God. It's not right. It needs to stop. And if it has to start with somebody, it's going to start with me right here. I'm, I'm against it and I pray to God that men will rise and start to take our position. Our position is to protect women and children and, and do what is right. Now, I love this. To all, let me also challenge the men in the church, the men that will not abuse women. Because I know a lot of men that are, that, that are against this demonic activity. Let me challenge them. Men, godly men, if you don't speak, if you don't pray, if you don't do anything about this, you are, particip you are part of the problem. It's time we speak against this and challenge all the other young men that are growing up and teach them the right way to love and respect women and to teach them the word of God. Because at the end of the day, we've got to, we've got to bring people back to the word of God. Let your light shine. Young men of Dazen Oak of Shaweni, Chelim Nyama, all the townships around me, Pine Town, 
Let your light shine before all men, that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Even if it, it looks stupid to everybody's walking that direction and you walking this way, you kind of look like a stupid man. Because if you follow Jesus and you are saved, they think something is wrong with you. How come you're not beating up a woman? How come you're not swearing? How come you're not smoking weed? How come you're not doing all these things? You look stupid in the eyes of the world. But it's time we do look stupid like that, but we let the sh our light shine. You know, now the scripture says this. The scripture says this. It says, it says, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk. You know, I was thinking about that. Then I realized, you know, when it's when you come into a room and it's it's at night and the lights are off, it's dark, and you can't see, the only thing that you need is light. You just bring the light and the, sh and the darkness begin to go. I'm telling you, men and women of God, it's time we rise up. It's time we take our position. It's time we do not entertain the racism. It's time we do not entertain injustice. It's time we do not entertain gender-based violence. It's time we do not entertain the killing of, of the kids. But we let our light shine. Mm -hmm. Now I realize that you don't even need a big light to chase out the darkness. You just need a light. Even if you feel like I'm not qualified, I'm not good enough, I'm not, we just need some light to go where the darkness is and the darkness is got to go. Because that, we don't have to pray, oh God, let the darkness go away. We just need to be a light and watch darkness go. And watch, the, because where there is light, Darkness cannot leave. Darkness cannot leave. Now, let me, let me read this scripture one more time. I love it. So let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going to speak the, the, that word of God. Even if you think maybe this is not a great preach you've had, let me speak the word of God over all the men, over all the people listening and watching me right now. Matthew 5 verse 16. Let your light shine before all men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's time the injustice stop. But I've got good news for you. Let me, let, me let me tell you good news before I end, before I close. Because I, I really, I don't have long message to preach to you today other than i want to tell you that it the time is now to do things right the time is now to make things right the time is now to repent if my people who are called by my name they humble themselves and pray i believe that the men that are doing this injustice i know even even a girl that's related to me was killed a few weeks ago the masiga and a girl was killed. The man tied, tied, tied her hand behind her back and put a rock on her back and threw, and threw her in the water. That is demonic. You take time to, to tie somebody who cannot defend himself, tie their hands and, and throw them in the water so that they die like that. It's injustice. It's injustice. We need to go back to God. The scripture says this, if my people who are called by my name, they humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I, God in heaven, I will hear their prayers. I will heal the land. I will heal the land. I believe, man, we need to stand and repent before God and say, we are wrong, God. We've treated your kids wrong. We've, tr we, we've treated your girls wrong. We are killing. We need to repent on behalf of the man and start doing right. The time is now. If you don't do anything right now, if you don't change now, then you're never going to change. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now that we, black people, start to respect and love and, and, and honor white people. And then white people start to honor, cherish, and love black people. Because we are one. If you're struggling, let me just, let me just throw this. This is, this is just for free. This is just for free. Everybody watching, this is for free. If you're struggling with racism, if you're a Christian and you love Jesus... And, and you know that when you die one day, you're going to heaven, but you're struggling with racism. Let me tell you something. It's going to be tough for you in heaven. Because in heaven, there's going to be every race, every tribe. We're all going to be singing one song. Joining with the angels, singing hallelujah, hosanna, singing and, 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 and worshiping our king and loving God together. You're going to be, you're struggling with the, standing next to a white man because you're black and you're a Christian. God is just going to put you next to a, a, a white man in heaven. It's going to be, it's going to be torture for you. 
I know that I'm saying this with them um, uh, half jokingly, but please, we need to go back to God. The time is now that we do things right. Let me let me just read the last scripture and I'm gonna close. I'm gonna tell just a few stories, then I'm gonna close. You know, during this during this pandemic, this um uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown and all those kind of things, we as a church uh, decided to just go love on people. Uh, Open Skies Kloof and Open Skies Giba, Open Skies PMB, uh, the, the, the church in, in, in unity, one church is Open Skies. We've, um, we've decided to, to really love on people during this time. It's been amazing for me to be working closely with uh, our founding pastor, Vorni. Uh, she's been coming with, my, with me and the, and the teams and the Bible College guys uh, to the community to just love on people. Let me tell you some of the stories there that we've seen there. Keep in mind, as I'm telling you this story, just bear in mind the scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before all men, that they may see your good works and, and glorify the Father in heaven. So... What we did is we were going into a community, we've been going to a communities of Dazenok and, and Chalimnyama and uh, to give uh, people food and, and clothing and, and blankets. You know, it's cold in winter and some people, they have no food. If I say this, if I tell you that people have no food, you don't try and, and, and compare what I'm saying to you because you are blessed. You know, if you, if you don't have uh, meat in the fridge, if you don't have chicken in the fridge, um, that doesn't mean you, you're struggling. You just don't have chicken for that season, <laughs> but you're not struggling. Now I'm talking about people that go for days with no food. There's a family of 10 that uh, live in one room. Uh, when, when our founding pastor Vonnie asked me to visit them because I told her about them, uh, she gave me she gave me food to take to these families and when i got there to give them this food they had um, they had been going for three days with no food like no food so we went and we gave them food and they, they had something to eat and we've been going again to give them things to to wear and we've been we gave them blankets and uh, i'm not trying to say look at us but it's been amazing we didn't tell them about the love of jesus we just did what was right. We showed them the way and um, we just let our light shine before men that they may see God and glorify Him. So it's been amazing to see um, uh, us as a church really taking responsibility for our, in our community. You know, we are busy right now trying to help a lot of people. There's a lot of people in Chelem Nyama community. That's where, that's where we started working recently. And um, they don't have IDs, they don't have IDs, they don't have documents. And uh, it, because of that, they cannot work, they cannot get any grants, they cannot study, their lives are stuck. I've seen a lot of young, bright young people, they cannot do anything because they don't have IDs. So we busy are praying and trusting God that God is going to use us to be a light in that community. Uh, find a way to help these people. Let your light shine before all men that they may uh, see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. The reason I'm telling you these stories, we are not saying, oh, we're not hiding. Yes, we're not meeting here in the church. I almost dropped my laptop. Uh, we're not, we, we're not uh, uh, hiding and we're not, I know there's not, no people in the, in, in the church right now in the building, but we are out there trying to be a light in the dark places so that people may see God and may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We are bringing hope. We are intentional about bringing hope. We met, we met this young, beautiful girl. She uh, has, has finished matric. She passed with a B plus. She's done really well, but she cannot carry on studying because, um, because she doesn't have ID. She wants to be a nurse so badly. She wants to study. She wants to study nursing, but she cannot. We're busy talking to her say, and, and finding ways to help, praying and saying, God, open doors for this young girl because this will be a testimony um, that God do open doors where it seem, seems to have, to have 
uh, uh, to have no way. We trust in God that things will, things will change, things will work in our community. That's the message I felt God laying in my heart. To speak strongly against um, gender-based violence. To tell the people watching, on us, watching us online that we, are, we may not be meeting in here, but we're touching hundreds and hundreds of lives out there. Uh, by the love of God, by just showing them, by just being a light, just being a light. You know, it's going to take some people, some bravery. It's going to take, you're going to need to be brave to do what God is calling you to do at this day and age. We are not over, we're not defeated. When Jesus died, in closing, when Jesus died, it looked as if it was over. But it wasn't over. So I know we're not meeting now and people are saying, what's What's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? People are, are fearful. It's not over. Jesus never lost a battle. Jesus is powerful. Jesus is coming back. Jesus, Jesus gives his people strength. Jesus is the king of kings. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Even those that have been a, a victim of abuse. Jesus is the same today, yesterday and forever. He will turn your situation to good. Because you love him and you are called according to his purpose. So that's the message I have for you this Sunday. I hope it blesses you. I hope, I hope it, it challenges you and causes you to get up and go do what God is calling you to do. The time is now. Do not say tomorrow. Don't look and say, I'm going to do it next month. No, tomorrow is not guaranteed. You are living today. So get up and do something today in the name of Jesus. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the word that you've laid in my heart. That's such a simple word. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let your light shine before all men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Thank you, God, that if you are for us, then who can be against us? I commit to everyone watching us online. I pray, Jesus, that they will, um, that they will come to know you in Jesus' name. If you are watching today and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, I want to tell you that you are loved by God. He loved you so much that he gave his one and only son to die for you. You are special. You are important to God. You need to be saved. If you're not saved, you're not, you need to make that right with God. You have to have a right relationship with God while you are living here on earth. The decision we make while we can hear and see what's going on, the message we've been told. So you are loved by God. If you, if you do not know Jesus, you're not saved, you, you need to be saved. And we're not saying come to our church, but you need to be saved and go to a Bible-believing church, spirit-filled church, where they speak the truth from the Word of God. If you are close to us, you're more than welcome to join us here once our building is open. You are loved by God. Let me pray. Uh, let me pray for you. But before I pray for you, I would like you to pray uh, after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. From this day, I choose you. I give my life to you. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, share this message with uh, your friends. Uh, we really appreciate that you'll take your time to watch us. God bless.